Well, hey everybody, it's Tom here. Welcome back to my shop. It is the uh, end of November. I don't know if the camera angle will pick it up, but it is uh, sunny outside, but it's still a cold, crisp November day. Good day to be in the shop and get a little bit of work done. So that's what we're going to do. Going to do some uh, repairs on the jet lathe. That's what I've been doing, small stuff here and there, just trying to get it squared away. Kind of uh, the same deal that Max is doing over there at Swan Valley Machine Shop in Perth, Australia. He and I basically have the same lathe. I don't know if you've noticed that or not. <laughs> same color scheme, same layout. Um, both of them were made in the early 80s in Taiwan. So uh, maybe even the same factory. Heck, I don't know. And they just rebadged his or rebadged mine. There's no telling. But uh, anyways, just trying to you know wrap up a few of the small issues. I've been uh, knocking them out. But this project I figure it'd be worth filming. So I'm gonna grab the camera and we'll take you over to the blade and show you what's going on. But before I do that, I just want to say um, you know, welcome to all my new subscribers and my new viewers to the channel. I appreciate it. Channel is slowly growing. Hopefully we can hit that 5k mark next year at some point in time. So if you're a viewer and not a subscriber, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. And as always, you know, thumbs up are appreciated. That helps the YouTube algorithm and also you know comments and share it with your friends so let's get over the lathe and show you what we're gonna do okay guys so what you're looking at is the middle section of my lathe so you've got your lead screw and then you got your two rods right well on these long bed lathes you need support because if you look see look how heavy this lead screw is and she's hanging down you know, it's not as bad on the two rods here, but the lead screw obviously needs to be up so she's straight. You know, you, when I'm down here farther at the lathe, if you're trying to uh, thread and engage the half nut, then obviously you're fighting it a little bit because the half nut's got to pull this lead screw up. And then, of course, you got your threading dial, which get a, gets affected a little bit. I mean, probably not much unless you're doing really fine threads. If it's sitting farther down, then obviously where you're engaging could be just a smidgen off and it could affect those fine threads. So that's today's project. Of course, it's probably going to go over a few days. I don't know how long it's going to take to make this thing. But we are going to make a support for the lead screw and these two rods. The lathe should have came with one. Um, I've got pictures from... Uh, a lathe at a machinery dealer the exact same lathe showing the support and then also max over there in australia was kind enough to send me a, several photos of his what his looks like and we are going to uh build us one so let's get over to the workbench and get a plan of attack let me show you on my phone so here's a picture of that support that's on the uh, lathe that's at the machinery dealer, but that's the exact same one that uh, Max Grant was kind enough to uh, send me some pictures of. So there's Max's there, as you can see. <laughs> I mean, they're basically identical, except the uh, oil fittings there or grease fittings that has, has been added. So that hangs off of the uh, V-way, and then you've got these supports made out of bronze hopefully this is coming out good in the gopro whoop don't want to look at that one <laughs> so here's uh here they are enlarged can you give you an idea so basically we've got about three pieces we've got the main body here that's going to hang down you know vertically we've got this piece that we're going to have to mill and then of course we've got to make the uh, this support here I picked up these two chunks of aluminum bronze, real cheap off of eBay since there's, you know, obviously some sort of drop that the uh, you know, seller cut it out of something larger and they didn't need these two pieces. So we've got a lot of meat right there, which will be perfect. We can use. So got that. And I'm thinking, obviously this was cast iron, but I don't I don't have a long piece of cast. I think I'm just going to use it out of uh, mild steel. You know, just basically some flat bar there. And then we just got to get a chunk here and uh, mill that out. 
So let me go rummage through my stockpile and uh, find this piece because this is obviously the most important. We'll get that uh, milled out. Oh yeah, and I also picked up some oilers. You guys can see that. So we'll put a couple of those in so we can squirt, 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 keep everybody happy and lubed. So let's get to it. So I found this big hunk of uh, material as part of that uh, purchase I made from that NASCAR team that went out of business a while back. I got a whole bunch of nice quality uh, steel. Not sure what this is. They had it marked, but over the years it's come off. So I'm thinking it's either uh, 1045 or uh, 4000 series, you know, maybe 4140. So it'll be some good stuff. Just getting it cut down to a rough dimension. Oh yeah, chaos says hi. <laughs> We're playing uh, football in the shop today. Oh! Of course he can't give it to him, he's got to drop it. Ah. Alrighty, here we go. You ready buddy? Good catch. Figured we'd fire up the old G&E shaper. Haven't run in a while. Block is out of the bandsaw. We'll go ahead and clean the top up. And get us a good reference surface. This side is uh, really smooth. It's like it's almost ground. So I basically took a square off of that. So using this and this so we'll get these two nice surfaces square with each other and get a chance to use my new chip pan so um, let me try to get you in a good spot I'll probably have to go handheld for a while but uh, we'll get some shaper action Doing 20,000 step over. I dialed in basically about 10 thou from about the middle of the part, as you can see. When the first engages, it's taking a little more off. And chip pan's working good. So that's the first pass. Almost cleaned up, except for that one little corner. Surface finish looks like crap. I wonder if it's 1018. I did uh, hone this bit before I stuck it in. Let me uh, touch it up again and I'll touch up the shear tool, see if we can't get a better surface finish, because that's ugly. But it is flat. Okay. Surface finish is a little better. I rehoned the uh, piece of high speed steel. I clocked it just a little bit. And I'm using cutting oil. And we're doing about uh, 7,000 depth of cut right now. So, like I said, it's a little better. If I can get you in there, a good shot, you can see it. I just finished up running a shear tool across it. You can see uh, 
you know, we're getting the chips that we need to be getting, but I still, the surface finish is not what I'd like. It's a little bit better. I'm not sure. Let me get stable here. The camera's picking it up or not. So, it's still just kind of uh, tearing more than cutting. But if that's the uh, 1018 in action, then, you know, you're kind of fighting that. So, probably what I'll do is when we're out in the mill, just run a fly cutter over it and get a really nice top. Um, now I need to flip it over and we'll get the bottom side um, to the measurement we need and trued up. So I got the block flipped and we're just uh, cleaning up side two here, or the bottom side, should I say. Just working on uh, laying out the block. Let's see if I can get this light good so it's not washed out and you guys can see the lines there. Hopefully you can. So this is basically the side of the block that would sit on the way. Oh, let me see. That's not too bad. Well, there you go, maybe. So we have to remove all this material here and then we'll come and mill that angle. What's nice is actually that's just a 90 degree. So makes that pretty easy now I'm just contemplating what's the easiest way to remove all this material here you know we got a lot to remove three inches that way and uh, about two inches this way so uh, you know if it was a lot bigger we could grip it in the bandsaw and cut in this way and then cut that way and be done with it but since it's such a small block don't really have a good way to grab her so contemplating whether to start you know drilling this out or set her up with a corn cob and just uh, start milling it down so I'll figure something out and uh, you guys will meet me back at uh, probably one of the mills Got rid of all that unwanted material. Ah, how's that look? I killed that big light. So I just uh, ran a fly cutter over the surfaces that the shaper left. I didn't like the uh, finish. Still working on my tool grinds on the shaper. Haven't perfected them yet. So just clean them on up. Now let's get to uh, you know, milling the important part, that V-way. We are over here at the Baney Horizontal Vertical Mill. And now it's time to just kind of you know, chew out this material. I'm going to uh, get as much as I can doing it in the vertical position and then uh, 
once I'm satisfied, we'll go ahead and turn the head 45 degrees and we'll go ahead and you know get that V done. So gonna run uh, Miss Coolant. Got you positioned back a little bit. Hopefully the GoPro won't get covered and we can get a little bit of milling footage. So let's get this thing uh, going. What do you say? Failed to mention I got a uh, one inch high quality Niagara fine roughing end mill in there. Doing 50 thou right now. Got the cut just to kind of clean it up and get the high spots once we get place to work off of and we just start chewing it down. Second pass taking off a hundred thou. So we're just starting to work on uh, cutting the V, getting the high spots out right now. Gonna be a little shaky, but I'm gonna go handheld. So here it is. I just uh, deburred all the edges. So came out pretty decent for what it is, and the fit is really nice. You guys can see this. Hopefully you can. I can hold the camera straight. So I didn't worry about relieving the bottom since they've already already relieved the top of this V. But uh, let me move back in case it's getting washed out. But there you is, you can see she's uh, got a really nice fit. Looks good. So pleased with that. Now uh, we got to do is uh, I guess <clears throat> figure out the uh, vertical support here and then once we get that uh, worked out, then start uh, addressing how we're going to make the uh, aluminum bronze bushings to hold the rods and the lead screw. 